Welcome to Worship with St. Martin's United Church on this Trinity Sunday. We are so glad you are with us today. Our leadership team for this service includes Betty Lou Agnew on piano, Kathy Anderson on computer and editing, Bob Anderson on camera, Ken Glover on sound and hymns, my colleague Jordan Cantwell, and myself, Keith Hall. We're grateful to Monty for lighting our Christ candle, Betty for reading scripture, Jenny for offering the prayers of the people, and Carrie for providing our prelude this morning. We hope that many of you will join us on Zoom at noon today for a time of fellowship. The Zoom link is in the church chat, or you can email Jordan to receive the link. Her email is on the screen. The Out Outreach Committee wishes to offer a sincere thank you to all of you for your donations to this week's food drive for the Saskatoon Food Bank and Learning Centre. Since there was no longer the opportunity to donate to the food bank while attending church, the Outreach Committee organized this food drive to help stock the shelves. The need is particularly great this year due to the pandemic, and as you can see from the pictures, the response was wonderful. Well done, St. Martin's. As Pentecost people, we believe that God's Spirit makes possible that which seems impossible, that which we only dare to dream. Trusting in the power of the Spirit at work among us, we affirm our desire for healing and right relationship and commit to the work of decolonizing ourselves and our church in actions as well as words. In this spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we are gathering for worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the agreement known as Treaty 6. From this Christ light, we light our affirming candle as a symbol of our intention to be a community where people of all races, gender identities, sexual orientations, physical and mental abilities experience true belonging. As John Lenn reminded us, peace is not something you wish for, it's something you make, it's something you do, it's something you are, and something you give away. We rejoice in God's presence, sensed in the hug of a child, reflected in the closeness of longtime partners. God is with us. We rejoice in God's presence, sensed in the faith community at prayer, reflected in unnoticed acts of caring. God is with us. We rejoice in God's presence, sensed in the living words of Jesus Christ, reflected in those through whom the Spirit moves. God is with us. And so we turn to God in prayer, fountain of every blessing, who pours the holiness of your divine self into every corner of our world. In this time of worship, fill us with, to the brim with your grace, that we might spill out from here 
and flow into the world with your refreshing waters of compassion, justice, and hope. We pray in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in praise of you, our loving God. Amen. Let us pray. God of the heavens and all creation, God of the breath within our bodies, you know the deepest longings of our hearts. You know the desires we cannot or dare not put into words. You know where hope lives in us and where hope has died in us. You alone know the whole truth of us and you alone have the words to speak us into life and love us into being. We turn to you in this time of silence, asking only that your spirit breathe in us the prayers we cannot form, the hope we cannot name. This morning's reading is from Romans 8, verses 18 to 27. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, 
Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we don't know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is testimony from our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. O oh God, who breathes in us, who lives through us, and in whom our lives are held, open our hearts and our minds to perceive the wisdom that your Spirit is offering us this day. Through Christ we pray. Amen. When I was a teenager, our church youth group hosted a fundraiser every year called Italian Night. Italian Night was a sit-down dinner at the church, consisting of lasagna, Caesar salad, and garlic bread that the youth group members would prepare and cook, and then we served the meal and cleaned up afterwards. And then we held a dance in the church hall for everyone. Italian night dinners and dances were well attended by members of the church of all ages. It was a really big event every year, and we all looked forward to it, especially to the dance. Italian night dances were not like our school dances. At a school dance, most of us stood shyly along the wall, hoping that someone would come and ask us to dance. Because if you weren't asked, you didn't dance. And if you did dance, it was with one other person, the girl or boy who had asked you to dance. But Italian night dances were different. I think it had something to do with the culture of community and belonging that we had created in our youth group. The dancing might start out with one or two people out on the floor, but then others would join in. And as soon as there were three people dancing in a group, it was a signal that any and all were welcome to join them. Pretty soon the dancing would overflow and fill the whole dance floor. And the best part about it was that dancers of all ages and genders were out there on the dance floor together, and everyone was dancing with everyone else. Now, just thinking about those youth group dances has helped me to understand the significance of the Christian concept of God as Trinity. It's important to remember that the early church came to understand God as Trinity over time, a few hundred years actually, as they reflected on scripture and their experience with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, for the first disciples, encountering Jesus was somehow encountering God directly. At the same time, Jesus spoke of God as both distinct from himself and yet one with himself. Out of this lived experience with Jesus, grew the understanding of the Incarnation, the oneness of God and Jesus, and yet their distinctiveness as well. Jesus also talked about the Spirit as something distinct from himself and also distinct from the God to whom he prayed, but also one with God. At the very beginning of his public ministry, he quotes from Isaiah saying, The Spirit of God is upon me and has anointed me to bring good news. In their own encounters with the Spirit, the early church found themselves heart to heart with God. We hear this in today's reading when Paul says, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. It is God in us who reaches out to God beyond us. God who forms prayer in us, and God who receives our prayer. 
they also found in the witness of Scripture that people experienced God's Spirit filling all of creation. Listen to these words from Psalm 139. Where can I go from your Spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. The Church's doctrine of the Trinity the idea that God is properly conceived as both three and one has its origins not in heady conceptual theology, but in the church's lived experience of God's presence, in the person of Jesus, in the life of the church, and infusing all creation while also being distinct from and larger than creation itself. Far from an outdated academic conceptualization of God, the doctrine of the Trinity has very practical implications that speak directly to the spiritual challenges of our times. Understanding God as three, yet one, is to understand the very essence of God, to be loving community. Not three gods who love each other, but one God that is love Love generated in relationship that circulates and overflows and includes everything and everyone. And now if we take Genesis 1 seriously, with its declaration that human beings are created in the image of God, then in our own way, we must be fundamentally relational as well, formed by our relationships with God and one another. In an era too often dominated by individualism, isolation, loneliness, and division, this is a radically reorienting perspective on ourselves and the purpose of our lives. What does it mean for us to affirm that the essence of our being and the guiding principle for our lives is communal, loving relationship that includes all? How might this shape our imagination? of what is possible and necessary as the world begins to emerge from the pandemic? What might it prompt us to do as we mark, this week, the one-year anniversary of George Floyd's murder? The doctrine of the Trinity insists that God is both bigger than and intimately present to the crises and challenges of our lives, with us, in the shadows of grief and violence, calling us towards justice and love. And at the same time, this doctrine reminds all that all relationships, even and especially relationships across differences, aren't just something we do. Relationships are who we are. If our relationships, person to person, neighborhood to neighborhood, group to group, are loving, mutually supportive and healthy, then we're healthy. And if they're not, then we're sick and require healing and restoration. Paul speaks about this necessary restoration as our adoption into the fullness of God. This is God's whole aim and desire to draw all creation up into the dance of mutual love that is God. Within that dance, we each maintain our distinctiveness while also becoming part of the great unity and oneness of God, where each one matters and no one dominates, where all belong and are beloved. Like our Italian night dances, where each person moved in their own unique way to the music that moved us all. Sometimes busting a move that was totally original, other times riffing on steps that others introduced, but always conscious that we were all dancing together. It was one dance with many dancers and many ways of dancing. The feelings I had on the dance floor at Italian night, feelings of belonging, of being able to be fully myself and not worrying about dancing the wrong way because there was no prescribed right way to dance, of being part of a whole that was bigger than myself, feelings of joy and delight in moving with others to a rhythm that set us all in motion, those feelings, that experience, 
taught me so much about the power and importance of loving, accepting, grace-filled community. I experienced God there. That is the truth the doctrine of the Trinity seeks to reveal. All creation lives and moves and has its being in the unity of God. Thus, we all belong to one another and are made whole by the love that unites us. May our churches be places where people experience this truth. Amen. Spirit of life, who breathes newness and possibility into all creation, all that we have comes from you. All that we give is a sign of our love for you and for the world you love. We praise you for all the gifts you give us and ask a special blessing on the offerings we make this day. May they be an expression of healing that brings hope to a hurting world. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
loving God, we come before you on this Trinity Sunday, asking that your Holy Spirit empower us for the daunting chance of engaging our world in this time. Like the violent wind that filled the house on that first Pentecost day, invade our awareness and fill us with boldness and power. Bring a time when we all are willing to listen and understand others and where communication barriers are overcome. Bring a time when the young have a larger vision than their own dreams. Bring a time when the old are not satisfied just to rest and enjoy life, but continue to dream dreams of building a better world and commit to achieving it. Bring a time when your church is excited and on fire because it knows and serves the God of the Pentecost experience. Bring a time when your church engages in alleviating the sufferings and injustices of the world. Bring a time when all Christians work together and when partisan bickering is passed. Bring a time when no group any longer claims it's superior to others and has an exclusive hold on the truth. Bring a time when there is tolerance and respect and understanding for the differences of others. Bring a time when all Christians stand together in unity and in love. Healing God, we pray for all in our community and in our church family who seek your healing presence and have asked for our prayers. Help us to offer our personal prayers for each person as their names are read. We particularly remember today Mary, Lorna, Erin, Cindy, Aidan, Gary, Peggy, Lillian, Eunice, Amy, Nancy, Pat, Rowan, Mildred, Leanne and family, Jane Gordon family, Owen and his family, Michelle, Evan and Isaac, and all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and those whom we name before you now in the silence of our hearts. Holy Triune God, all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be belongs to you alone. You have spoken to us through Jesus, the world made flesh. Guide us into the truth by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that we may glorify you, the lover and creator of us all. Amen. Friends, I know that we are all reeling from the news of the 218 bodies of children that were unearthed on the grounds of the former residential school in Kamloops, BC. We cannot be unaffected by this. This lifts up grief and, tra and trauma that each one of us carries, reminds us that our work of healing and memory and truth-telling and reconciliation has only begun, it is not done. And so I want to respond to the call to prayer from Murray Pruden, the Executive Minister for Indigenous Ministries for the United Church of Canada. He has invited all of us to light our medicines, to light a candle, to open our hearts and our minds in prayer and so I want to light this candle. To acknowledge, to remember all of the children who were taken, particularly those who never made it home. And I invite you to please join me in prayer in the words that Murray has shared with us. 
Creator, we give thanks for this day and for each day you grant us life to walk on this great land, our Mother. Give us the heart and strength to come together in prayer in this time of mourning, reflection, and peace. The news we have heard these last few days of our relations, families, the children who have been physically taken away from us and who have now been found, this news causes us to grieve for their memory, for their struggle, for their spirit. We pray for good understanding, guidance, and love for all our families and communities who need direction and resolution at this time. And we come together in prayer and ask for your light to guide us, to be a part of that needed peace, support, and resolve for everyone who is reacting to this great tragedy in our indigenous nations in this great land. Creator, be with us. Allow us to be brave. Allow us to be strong. Allow us to be gentle to one another. Allow us to be humble. But most of all, allow us to be like the Creator's love. Peace be with us. We lift our prayers up to you in love and trust and truth. Peace be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
The words God speaks are the life and sustenance of all that exists. The life Jesus gives is the recreation and renewal of all that is broken and worn. The spirit stirring in our souls is the inspiration for creativity, compassion, joy, and community. Life-giving, life-restoring, life-fulfilling God, may our whole lives be worship. In all things, may we seek to connect with and to reflect your love and your hope. And may we be strengthened and inspired to be God's comfort, healing, and peace in the world. Amen.